For prose fiction, these are really unique because there's no thesis. So if you're planning on tackling this one first, it's going to be because you're really good at it and you're okay with there not being a thesis. In addition, you're going to have to keep track of characters and their feelings, and there are very few relevant details. You're not going to see names, dates, people, places. There isn't going to be a strong intro and conclusion, and you're not going to have supporting body paragraphs. It's just not the way these are written. So you're going to keep straight who's related to whom, who's friends with whom, what the author is trying to convey, and also keep in mind prose fiction passages. Every passage has 10 questions that goes along with it. Prose fiction passages oftentimes have a lot of inference questions, and those are the types of questions that can be really challenging. There aren't usually a lot of detail questions in which they just ask you to locate something in the passage. They want you to analyze what's being talked about. We have a sample passage, and the point of looking at this passage is to really hone in, meaning focus in on the characters involved. There are kind of three characters. So there are two human characters, and then there is a doll that the little girl is friends with. So it's her little doll that she carries around with her. So the doll itself, of course, is not a living creature, but it winds up representing a friend for this little girl. So as you're reading, don't rule out things like pets, um, really treasured objects. You're not going to count them as distinct characters per se, but you do want to recognize that that can be a relationship. So what you're going to do first is read these first two paragraphs. You can pause the video so you can do that. And then write down your summary of those two paragraphs on your paper, and then check what we put down with what you wrote. So now that you've read it and written, I, if you haven't written something on paper, now's the time. We want you to recognize that the narrator is very shy and, as I mentioned, the doll is a friend, little girl. That's all you need. If they ask for a specific line reference, you can go back to it. You don't need to memorize. We're looking for overarching themes. We're looking for a summary. We're not looking for really, really specific details. Go ahead and read the third paragraph, pause the video, write down what you found in the third paragraph. Now that you've read the third paragraph, we are introduced to the second human character. We have the shy narrator and we have the godmother who is stern and church going. And this is from the perspective of her goddaughter. So here we have paragraphs four and five. Four is super, super short. Go ahead and read paragraphs four and five. You can pause the video. Now that you've read paragraphs four and five, so we have um, sort of another character. The character is no longer alive and this is the narrator, her name is Esther, Esther's mom. And it's important to note that the tone remains constant so far. In prose fiction passages, it won't always remain constant. But for this particular character, there is a lot of sadness. And so we're exploring where the sadness comes from, how these relationships play into how this little girl feels. And we want to continue that thread. We want to see how that author is conveying this information to us. Go ahead and read just paragraph six, which is up at the top right here. Now check to see what you wrote down with what we're putting up here. Her birthday was never celebrated. So now you're gonna go ahead and read paragraph seven, which is dinner was over. Now that you've read paragraph seven, we're getting into some really interesting information about how the godmother treats the little girl. So go ahead and read eight, nine, and 10. Paragraph seven through 10 
are an interchange or conversation between the godmother and the little girl. What we need to understand is how the little girl feels and how the godmother feels. So Esther feels she should have never been born and the godmother has anger towards the mother. That's going to leave at least some sort of impact, if not a scar, so an, an emotional scar. So we're seeing where this sadness comes from, and we need to keep this in mind when we look at answer choices. We want answer choices to convey the sadness that this poor little girl has and how the treatment of her godmother toward her really affects a lot of her life, at least in that time period and most likely going forward. We just have two paragraphs left. Go ahead and read just paragraph 11. Paragraph 11 really shows how the character is relying on the doll to make her feel better. So even though the doll is an inanimate object, it represents a friend for her. Go ahead and read the very final paragraph. Now we have a conclusion, and in terms of tone, nothing changed. It's still very, very sad. Now that we have read that very sad passage, we actually can celebrate when we get answers correct, and we're going to do that by predicting. So we have our passage map right there. Taking a look at it, we really captured what the author is trying to convey. We have a good sense of the narrator, and now we're going to put it to good use. We have, according to the passage, Esther only remembers. When it says according to the passage, it means that we will find support in the passage. So our prediction for number one is right down there. In paragraph three, I was brought up from my earliest childhood remembrance by my godmother. Match it to an answer choice. Answer choice D will earn you a raw score point. We have another according to the passage. In paragraph 11, I went up to my room and crept to a bed and laid my doll's cheek against mine, wet with tears, and holding that solitary friend upon my bosom, cried myself to sleep. It's very sad her only friend and confidant. Now, answer choice H is what we call a distortion. It could be true, like a sister to her, but we don't want to go too far beyond the scope of the passage. The author's trying to convey the fact that Esther feels very alone. So having it be her only friend and confidant is a much better conveyance of what the author's trying to tell us rather than could be like a sister to her. But really, we want to know the loneliness and then it's reflected in the correct answer. We have our third question. They point us right to paragraph 10. So here is paragraph 10. It's the last part of paragraph 10, and this is what the godmother is telling her. Now, the important part here, and I can change the color so that you can see the highlight for this one. but her face did not relent. So the godmother does say, I have forgiven her, but the fact that her face did not relent, relent means to ease up or to stop. So she's scowling and she said, but I've forgiven her and she stopped scowling, then perhaps that's true, but she's scowling and she says, I've forgiven her. Well, gee, that was really convincing. <laughs> so it seems that the godmother has not forgiven the mother for whatever the mother happened to have done. So continues to resent. To resent someone means to have very bad feelings towards that person. Final question. Another according to the passage. So it does say according to the passage, but we really are looking to make an inference here. We know that prose fiction oftentimes has inference questions. So our prediction for, for question number four is in paragraph two. So we're looking for something that conveys that the character is shy, never dare to open her, her heart to anyone else, anyone else other than her doll, she's saying. So find that, that very sad answer choice.
answer choice G. So we're happy that we got correct answers. And it really goes back to the passage map. So looking at our passage map, and I can put it in green. Green for go get the points. We are looking at how this character is describing her life, at least this part in her life. And we know that we're going to get more points when we understand those relationships. Now, if you're really good at this, absolutely do prose fiction first. It is at the very beginning of the section. But if this is a really challenging one for you, then save it. Save it till the end when you're already getting towards when they call time's up, or at the very least, the five minute left mark, and use that to your advantage. So prose fiction really does require practice. And you will find that the more you practice, the easier it is for you to look at these passages, understand the characters, the feelings, and even though there's no thesis, understand what the author's trying to say.